Tonight, Spotify fires back at Taylor Swift. An Apple iMessage issue goes to court. And why Yahoo's buying ad service Bright Roll. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 213 for Tuesday, November 11th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes hiring faster, easier, and cheaper. Post your job to over 50 job boards with just one click and try ZipRecruiter with a free four-day trial right now at ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. Hello, everybody. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into today's tech feed. Over the weekend, Apple introduced a tool that allowed users to deregister their phone numbers from iMessage. But Apple will still face a federal lawsuit over this issue because the company allegedly failed to notify customers that leaving the iMessage system and switching to an Android phone would prevent them from receiving messages from other iPhone owners. Reuters reports that Judge Lucy Coe has ruled that former iPhone customer Adrian Moore's lawsuit, which was filed earlier this year, can move forward. Moore says she stopped receiving messages after she switched to the Samsung Galaxy S5 from an iPhone 4, which then interfered with her contract with Verizon Wireless. Moore is seeking both class action status and unspecified damages from Apple. Co said Moore deserved a chance to at least show Apple disrupted her wireless service contract and violated a California unfair competition law by blocking messages meant for her and her alone. Alibaba Chief Executive Vice Chairman, Executive Vice Chairman rather, Chief Executive is a different person, Joseph Tsai, tells the Wall Street Journal that a payment alliance between Apple and Alibaba's financial services affiliate Alipay would focus on the Chinese market and that the two parties are currently discussing specifics of a possible partnership. For example, Alipay might provide back-end services for Apple's Apple Pay payment system, allowing iPhone users to pay with Apple Pay using the money from their Alipay accounts. Mr. Tsai said that, but Alibaba CEO Jack Ma also told Chinese CCTV earlier today Today, that Alipay would definitely go public at some point, but that there wasn't a time frame for an IPO. Clearly, they are expanding. After Taylor Swift withheld her latest album, 1999, which might be good and might not be good, I'm not going to judge you, from music streaming services and claimed that they perpetuate the perception that music has no value and should be free, which of course she does not agree with. Last week, the artist also removed her back catalog from, street, from music streaming service Spotify. Now, she did leave it on competing services, audio and Beats Music, so... One might wonder what the strategy is there, if not to be a PR move, Leo Laporte thinks. Spotify finally had something to say about that. And joining us with more is Jason Abruzzi's reporter over at Mashable, reporting on business. Hello, Jason. Hey, guys. How's it going? It's good. Thanks for coming back on the show. So Spotify CEO Daniel Ek put out a blog post today, and he spent a lot of time focusing on Taylor Swift. This story has gotten a lot of attention. So what does Spotify have to say about the fact that she said, you don't get our back catalog anymore, you particularly Spotify? Well, the CEO who, you know, issued a lengthy blog post today on this kind of, uh, you know, turned uh, Taylor Swift's argument on its head by saying that music has been free for years, and that's the problem. And that Spotify wants to fix that. And they think they can do that by bringing in uh, listeners to a freemium model, which basically means that I get to listen for free, but you're going to hear some advertisements. And then over time, just by displaying the value of their platform and how great it is, that I'll hopefully start paying for it. And that'll just mean more money in the music ecosystem. Well, so Spotify pays out money. It's not as if, you know, the, the freemium model, you know, still generates revenue for artists and the labels that represent the artists. So what kind of money are we talking about? In total, um, the blog post today said two billion. Now that's a that's a big number, particularly because the last number we heard about a year ago was one billion. Now that's starting in two thousand eight, ending in two thousand thirteen. So in five years, Spotify said it made about a billion dollars. In the last year, it's saying it made another billion. So that kind of acceleration that they've you know kind of just very gently implied here is part of the argument. I think that. Spotify CEO is really saying that not only do we have a good model for the music industry, but we're getting to the scale, we're getting to the size, we're getting enough people on it that now it's really starting to pay off for uh, everybody from Taylor Swift to smaller artists to medium artists to older artists. Okay, you, you mentioned smaller artists. Uh, Eck had stated that Taylor Swift would have made around $6 million this year on Spotify. 
Well, okay, $6 million for Taylor Swift might not be a ton of money, but it does go to show you that there's certainly, there's revenue to be had. But for smaller artists who have a problem getting attention at all, certainly can't make sort of grand statements like a larger artist like Swift to say, no, no, I, you know, I've, I've, there are some principles in place here that, you know, we all have to understand. How long does Spotify have? You know, what's the runway between artists who are well-known saying this is bad for business and Spotify saying, Taylor Swift, you just made $20 million and then all of a sudden it doesn't seem too bad for her? Well, uh, the uh, the CEO actually referenced an interesting example in this comparison. Um, a new newer artist named Hosier um, has a single Take Me to Church you might have heard it's kind of like a, a bigger hit but he's a newer artist oh, yeah he was on saturday night live recently he's on saturday night live he was in a lebron commercial um that song <laughs> has 50 up. Million, yeah i know and that song has 50 million streams on spotify already so i mean it got 50 million pretty quick which is i think kind of part of the allure but he's also claiming that that song alone and those streams generated hundreds of thousands of dollars uh for the label and the artist to split uh, so, I mean, even if you're, you know, a smaller artist who's just kind of starting to hit the big time, you know, Spotify is starting to make the case now that you can even be a big, a bit of a one hit wonder and see a pretty good payday on that on that uh, platform. All right. So 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 what happens with artists like Taylor Swift, you think? I mean, if, if an artist actually gets a cut and the middleman get their cut and streaming services continue to have subscribers, you know, I'm a streaming music subscriber. And I have to say, I, I don't want to rip anybody off, but it's a pretty convenient way for me to listen to a lot of different music. You know, which, yeah, at, at, at what point do, do, is there some some middle ground that everybody agrees on? Sure. I, you know, I think we're getting there. Um, Spotify's, you know, problem has always been that, you know, the model theoretically works. You just have to get enough people on it, you know, and the more people who are on it and, you know, the more people who are particularly like yourself that are paying for it, the better it's going to be. Um, it was a much tougher proposition early on when they didn't have as many, many users. Um, you know, the today they claimed 50 million active users, 12.5 million subscribers. Those are pretty big numbers. Um, you know, I still think the payouts when you see them, you know, fractions of a penny for every stream, they still rub people the wrong way. It still it still comes off as, as not a particularly great deal. And, and if you're a smaller artist who, you know, say you only get uh, 15,000, 20,000 streams, and if you think to yourself, well, oh, man, could I have gotten, you know, 10,000 iTunes purchases out of that, you might still feel a little ripped off. Spotify is, you know, working to working to, you know, change that perception. But, you know, especially if you're a smaller artist, it's, it's never going to seem like quite the moneymaker uh, that, uh, you know, regular album sales were. Also, with digital music sales so down, it, it, it's some it, it boggles the mind a little bit uh, that an artist would say, well, just change your attitude, world. <laughs> you know, I, I see the way that this is going and I don't like it. So I'm just going to make it harder for you to buy my music. Sure. And, and I think one of the other issues here is that like when you add Spotify into the record labels, the managers, the marketing, like everybody else who's taking their cut, like putting, you know, another another group in another company that wants to take, uh, you know, a percentage of, of, you know, the royalties from people's music, it can be a tough pill to swallow for uh, for artists. And it would be interesting to see going forward. I, I think you guys have probably covered a good amount on the Amazon and Hachette battle where Amazon mm -hmm. has basically become like the main one of the main distributors for ebooks. Right. Uh, you know, book publishers have been caught in the middle a little bit, uh, a little unprepared for the power that Amazon wields. And authors also have been kind of, you know, held hostage due to this. You have to start wondering if artists are going to say, you know, my label's not doing that much for me. If Spotify is doing all of my promotion, all of my streaming, I can just go out on my own and, and you know, not have to carve up all these royalties quite as much. You know, speaking of large companies, Google is also wanting to get in the streaming music service, uh, YouTube-based streaming music service, which, you know, and it... When I first heard word of this, I thought, what? That's crazy. YouTube is all about videos. But so many people use YouTube actually to build song playlists and, and really use it as an audio service as well. So what is Google's latest deal that it's, that it's striked to get, uh, to, to get this moving? Yeah, so the Financial Times reported today that uh, YouTube has come to an agreement with the representative uh, that negotiates on behalf of a group of indie labels. This was thought to be one of the last holdouts um, to not have a licensing deal with uh, YouTube's uh, streaming service and therefore Google's streaming service. Um, now that this is passed, this uh, this service, which has been in the works for, I, I mean, I've been hearing about it for, I would say, about 18 months. It's been, it's been a while. We thought it was going to launch last year. Now it finally sounds imminent, like it's going to launch soon. Um, that's another major player. Uh, you know, you already have groups like Spotify and Deezer that are more startups. You have Amazon that has, you know, stream music on its prime service now. Obviously, Apple has Beats now, so 
you know, a crowded, uh, a crowded industry just got even more competitive. And it's going to be interesting to see what they roll out. Now, Google's so good at certain things. Do you think that streaming music is something that they can become not just a player in, but, but compete with the likes of Spotify? You know, I don't see why not. You, you have to imagine if it's Google, it's going to be backed by some great technology. They're probably going to throw some pretty good marketing behind it. YouTube already, as you said, has a pretty good brand when it comes to, to uh, people associating it with music. Uh, and one of the things that YouTube has that really nobody can compete with is they have a li really deep library of just like live music and rare tracks that people have uploaded, like random bands covering strange songs, like stuff that people really get into. Um, you know, that's probably not going to, you know, swing the entire market. But it is a nice little thing that they're going to be able to capitalize going forward. And, and you know, just another advantage that a company that's already big and very powerful and uh, very, you know, good technologically is going to have in their pocket when they're, uh, you know, trying to compete with everybody else in this market. Jason Abruzzi's reports over at Mashable focuses on business and comes on to TN2 every so often when, when, uh, when he'll have us. Thanks so much for being here, Jason. And before you go, remind folks where they can read your work. Yeah, um, come check me out at Mashable. Um, we have uh, a lot of great journalists. I actually should plug, um, Brian Hernandez wrote a really good article on um, what different artists experience on Spotify. If you're Ooh, really interested nice. in the Spotify subject, go check that out. It's like, you know, big people, you know, growing artists, indie people. Like, it's, it's really a great read if you, if you want to go more in depth on this topic. Excellent. Will do. Thanks so much. Great. Thanks so much for having me. All right, coming up, Apple is gunning for the enterprise market. We knew they were doing that, but they really mean it this time. And a word of warning, if you've ever posted a photo of the Eiffel Tower on the internet, which I have. But first, are you hiring? I certainly hope so, that I'm proud of you because your business is growing. Maybe it's growing from one person to two or 10 to 20 or 40 to 50. Do you know where to post your job to find the best candidates, though? Because it doesn't. you don't want your company to grow at all unless you've got the right people who could who can take it to the next level. Posting your job in one place, well, you know, you might get lucky, but it's not enough. There's quality candidates and you have to sort of be everywhere. So you want to cast a wide net and then you don't wonder, gosh, you know, I wonder if there was a better applicant out there who didn't see your post. ZipRecruiter posts to 50 plus job sites, including Craigslist, LinkedIn, and Twitter, all with a single click. You can post once and watch qualified candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy to use interface. You don't have to juggle a bunch of emails from people or, or calls coming into your office. That can get really overwhelming. You want to screen your candidates, you want to rate them, and then you want to hire the right person fast and easily. Find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used by over 250,000 businesses. Right now, our listeners can try ZipRecruiter for a free four-day trial. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash TN2. And thanks to ZipRecruiter for their support of Tech News Tonight. On to a few more stories that we're following today. Yahoo has announced that it's buying automated advertising service Brightroll for about $640 million, which will grow its ability to sell video ads in real time to marketers. Brightroll is profitable and expected to have revenues of more than $100 million this year, which would make Yahoo's video advertising platform the largest in the U.S. That's at least according to the company in a statement this afternoon. Today, Google launched Google Fiber for small business, which opens the company up as an ISP to other companies, along with consumers. The rollout is starting with an early access program in select areas of central Kansas City for $100 per month. A Google spokesperson tells VentureBeat, we're working on plans to bring Google Fiber to small businesses in more cities, although we don't have specific details to share just yet. We hope to have an update and additional suit cities soon for now we're focused on launching this early access program in kansas city by the way google offers gigabit internet to households for 70 dollars per month so a 100 dollars small business price kind of looks good kansas city is so lucky reuters reports that apple is in the process of hiring a dedicated sales force to talk with potential enterprise clients to offset a gradual deceleration in growth by expanding its footprint in the workplace yes apple wants to own enterprise three months after unveiling a partnership with ibm to develop apps for corporate clients and sell them on devices some industry experts now believe apple could try to challenge Hewlett Packard's and Dell's dominance of Office IT and Oracle and SAP's dominance over work applications. Two people familiar with the matter tell Reuters that Apple has worked closely with a group of startups, including ServiceMax and PlanGrid, that already specialize in selling apps to American corporations, and that the company is already in talks with other mobile enterprise developers to bring them into a formal partnership. Finally, here's something to keep in mind on your next vacation. Did you know that certain landmarks, such as the Eiffel Tower, are actually protected by copyright laws? 
Now, allow me to butcher some French here. The Société d'Exploitation de la Tour Eiffel recently confirmed that photos taken of the Eiffel Tower at night are under copyright and that people who post the photos on Facebook or other sites could be fined for violating the law. Now, you might say, what? How is that possible? The Eiffel Tower was built back in 1889, so that puts it in the public domain. But it has a nighttime light show that was added to the tower later and is subject to copyright laws. So it's technically illegal to share pictures, even if it's your own original photo, without prior request. I don't know, man. I posted quite a few on Instagram and nobody ever, maybe I don't have enough followers. And that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. You can write us at TN2 at twit.tv and watch live every day if you can at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Of course, you can watch and listen on demand at your leisure as well. Don't miss Tech News today. That's tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane and I'll be back here tomorrow doing this again. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.